Today, I'm going to show you how to make awesome animated overlays for your live streams. To do this, we're going to use Photoshop and After Effects. So let's get to it. These overlays can have any design and shape that you want. I'm going to show you the very basics. The one I show you is probably best suited for something like a gaming stream. Using the exact same method I show you here today, you're going to be able to make epic overlays for any kind of live stream. And you're definitely going to want to stick around to the end because I'm going to tell you the things you shouldn't do with your overlays. It's not that hard to make a big mistake that's going to make your live stream an absolute disaster. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into Photoshop and start creating. Here we are in Photoshop. We're going to open a new file by hitting Create New. Then we're going to select 1920 by 1080. You just want to make sure that it has a transparent background and click Create. Then we're going to select our box tool and I'm going to select a color for the stroke of this box I'm going to create. And you can see I'm going to create a box that goes all the way to the corners of the screen, just leaving a little bit of an edge. Then I'm going to zoom in here and try to adjust it so it looks about right. I don't want a very thick line, so I'm going to adjust the size of the line here a little bit. I just want a real thin kind of outline here. And then I'm going to push this box as close to the edge as I possibly can get it. To make this a little more visible, I'm going to create a layer in the background. We're just going to fill it with white. Now I'm going to go back to my box tool and I'm going to create another box here. I have the stroke turned off, but I want to fill this box and I'm going to select a color to do that. We're going to select this dark gray color here, I think. Then I'm going to select the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to make a little bit of a cut on one of these edges here. And I'm just going to do this outline here. And then I'm going to select the mask tool. You can see it just cuts off that little edge so I have a corner on the one end. I'm going to move this up to the top right inside of my outline. And then I want to duplicate this. And then I move it out a little bit. And I go to edit and then transform. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. And move this up to the top right corner. And I'm going to duplicate it again and move it out a little bit. Then I'm going to flip it vertically, move it down to the bottom right hand corner. And one more time, I'll duplicate it, flip it horizontally and move it to the bottom left hand corner. So now I have this little edge on each corner. Next, I'm going to create a vertical one. I'm going to use the same process. I'll draw my box then I'll use the lasso tool to outline the edges. And then I'm going to use the mask to create that sharp edge. I'm going to move this into the top right corner. Then I'm going to duplicate it and flip it vertically. Move it to the bottom right corner. Duplicate it again and flip it horizontally. Move it to the bottom left corner. Then duplicate it once again. Invert it and then move it to the top left corner. So now we have kind of an interesting outline shape going on here. I want to add a little more detail. So I'm going to draw some boxes in here. and I'm just going to change the color of those boxes. And for the front one, I'm going to use the same lasso tool to create that sharp edge so it lines up with the edge. And now I'm just going to create a series of boxes. And I'm going to change the color on each of those boxes so it gets lighter and lighter. And this is just kind of a detail accent. And I draw a big large box at the end here and I'm going to use the gradient tool to do something a little more interesting. I select the color of the last box and then I go all the way to white. And I just change the direction of the gradient so it's going left to right. Or right to left. The next thing I'm going to do is select all these accent boxes and then I'm going to group them together. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that group. Then I'm going to select all the items in the group, drag it down to the bottom left and flip it vertically. Then I'm going to duplicate that group, select all the items in the group, drag it all the way to the right and we're going to flip this horizontally. Now you can see when you flip it horizontally the grating looks kind of off. So I have to go into the gradient here and just move my little color palette pieces to the other end so it looks right. Then I'm going to duplicate this one more time, select everything in it, drag it up to the top right, and then flip it vertically. So now we're starting to come along to a nice layout for this box. Next, we're going to add some moving pieces to our overlay. The process for this is pretty similar. First, we're going to go and we're going to create a little bit of a thinner box. We're going to make this box red. Then once again, we're going to use our lasso tool to add some edging to this. And we'll mask that out. We're just going to bump this up against that top outline line right in the center. Then we'll duplicate it, bring it down to the bottom and flip it vertically. 
And now we're gonna make one of these for each side as well. So I just create a vertical one, use the lasso tool to create the shape I want, move it to the edge, duplicate it, and move that to the other edge. Now we're gonna add a bit of a text box down here in the bottom. This you can use to scroll text or create a banner. I just create a box. I'm going to change the fill color to a gray, and then I'm just gonna lower the opacity about 25%. So the box you can see exists, but you'll be able to run text underneath this box, and you'll see why you might wanna do that in a little while. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is put another small box in here to kind of outline or define the area of my text and change the color. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make this as thin as possible. So that's our box. I'm gonna export this as a PSD file, and we're gonna go into After Effects, and I'm gonna drag that Photoshop file into our assets here, and I'm going to change this from Footage to Composition, Retain Layer Size, because we want our composition to be the same size, that 1920 by 1080, and then just click OK. You can see that composition is right there. We'll just drag that into our timeline. And now we can see all the things that we just created in that Photoshop. Now we just need to locate the layers that we want to add movement to. I'm going to start with this red box at the bottom. I want to make sure that my timeline is at zero seconds. And click the little stopwatch. This will add a keyframe there. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Then I move my timeline forward to about 30 seconds. Then I just move the red box to where I want it to go. And this adds another keyframe there. I move it out another 30 seconds. I move the box again to where I want it to go. And then last but not least, I move it out another 30 seconds and then put the location back to where I started in the very beginning. This means when you loop the video, it'll begin and end at the exact same spot. It'll look like a fluid animation. Then I go ahead and repeat the process with the other red boxes. Now I kind of want to make sure that this just adds a little bit of visual interest. So I make the boxes move kind of in opposite directions. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and scroll through your timeline. You can see all your boxes move. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of lighting. To do this, first I'm going to add an adjustment layer. I'm going to move that adjustment layer all the way to the top of my timeline. And on this adjustment layer, I'm going to add an effect called Light Sweep. And in my effects panel on the left, I'm going to adjust the brightness and the intensity of the light. And you could see it down there in the chat box. Now I like to take the center point, which is the one above the actual center point of the image, and move that to the middle of my image. This is where the light will rotate from. So it's going to produce from the front and the back. So you'll notice a similar lighting effect on the top bar as you do on the text bar at the bottom. Once I have the light sweep set up with the color and the size and the kind of look that I want, I move the timeline to the beginning of my composition and then I click the little watch next to direction. This adds a keyframe at the beginning of the composition. Now I move it out to halfway through the composition and I just rotate that direction in a way that's interesting to me. This adds another keyframe and then I just go to the end of the composition and I return that direction to the same point. And this means that when you put it in a loop, it'll look like it's a never-ending sweep of the light. Now I like to add another light that moves in the opposite direction. And I do the exact same thing by setting up my keyframes. For this, I'm going to add a third light sweep. And for this light sweep, I'm going to use the little center icon. I'm going to move that center icon all the way over to the left, right above the text box. I click the stopwatch button. Now I make sure the timeline is at the very beginning. And this adds a keyframe. So I just move that little icon all the way over to the other side. This adds another keyframe. And again, when you loop it, you want everything to return to the same location. So you can't tell that it's not a complete video that's just constant. And you can see that adds a pretty cool effect. So the last thing we have to do is output this so we can actually use it in OBS. Go ahead to File and Export and add to Render Queue. Once you get in the Render Queue, you want to click the little lossless button, go up to Channels, drop that down, and select RGB plus Alpha. And then click OK. Then on the right where it says Output to, just click on whatever's to the right of that and select the location where you want your file to go and then save it with a specific name so you'll remember what it is later. Then all you have to do is click the little Render button on the right hand side of the screen and it will render out that entire video. Once our overlay is exported, all we have to do now is put it into OBS. You can see here I have a scene set up with my camera and my audio. I just click this little plus button down at the bottom of the sources for the scene I'm working in. Then I'm going to select media source. 
I want to just name this media source something that I'm going to remember. So I just call it tutorial. Then I browse to the location of the overlay movie that we just created. And then I want to set this overlay to loop and I can adjust the speed of the overlay down here. So we can slow it down or speed it up depending upon how we want it to look. But we want to take a look at it before we decide whether it's too fast or too slow. So I click OK here and there is our overlay. You can see all the pieces are moving as well as our light sweeps. Now I'm going to just add some text down here for this text box. To do that we're going to click the little plus button again and we're going to go to text and we'll name this text something we'll remember. Tutorial text I guess. Click OK. Now we could go in here and in our text box just type in what you want your text to say. I can go in select the font change it up. Any font that you have on your computer is going to be available here. Now I can go down here and add an outline and a drop shadow if I like and I click OK. You can see it puts the text in the top left. I'm just going to move it down into my text box, then expand it to the size that I want it. Now if I move this below the overlay, that's where that gray area would be. And you see it gets a little lighter. But the reason why you might want to do this is because the actual spotlights can affect the way the text looks better if it's underneath because it is affecting the overlay. Either way, you can have it on top of the text box or underneath. It's really your call. Now I'm going to show you how you would scroll this text if you wanted to. I just placed the text all the way to the left hand side of our text bar. I'm going to go into filters, hit the plus button and add scroll. And you can name your scroll if you want. Once you go in here, you, you can just move this speed thing to adjust the speed. Now you can see it's just scrolling that text in the little box. What we want to do is make it more readable and have it stretch all the way across the screen. So I go and right click on it. I go into properties. And what I do here is I move this out of the way so I can see my screen. And as I add spaces you could see the red box moving to the right. And I just want to move it all the way to the limits of our text box. And then I click OK. And now you can see that it scrolls the entire length of our text bar. Pretty cool stuff. And that should give you all the basics that you need to create an overlay for your live stream. Now I'm going to take you through a little bit of the do's and don'ts of the overlay for your live stream. It's pretty easy to mess this up. And if you do it wrong, your stream could become an absolute disaster. Once you start to use this stuff to the point where it's pushing your encoder, you're going to have all kinds of problems with your connection speeds and everything else. And I certainly want to make sure that you can avoid doing this. There really are no limits to what you can do with an overlay. There are, however, limits to what you should do with an overlay. This is an overlay I used in the past for a live stream. I have my video window located in the top left. In the lower thirds, all the way across the bottom, I have a rotating video that shows my logo and then, of course, the name of the show that I'm broadcasting. Above that, I put a promo video of the different videos I was running at the time. And above that, I have some bizarre big nipple animation that really doesn't have anything to do with anything. Now, on the surface, there's really nothing wrong with this layout. There probably shouldn't be some abstract nipple animation all the way up in the top right-hand corner. It doesn't say anything. It's not useful. It's just kind of something that's going to annoy your eyeballs after a little bit of time. A better way to set this up would be to have some sort of promotional slideshow in the right-hand side if that's what I wanted to do. And the rotating logo with the show name on the bottom is a little bit distracting and probably doesn't need to be quite so large either. But that's not actually the biggest mistake I made when creating this layout. I created the overlay and separated each of the boxes by little lines. Then I added those videos in in OBS. And this is a huge mistake because now OBS is encoding a big nipple video, a slideshow video, and my scrolling lower thirds. And it had a lot of problems with this, which created havoc on my live stream. What I should have done was taken the Photoshop overlay template, imported it into After Effects or Premiere, added the video elements I wanted, and exported them all into one file. That way I just put it in as an overlay and loop it, and it's not encoding four videos at one time. So don't make the same mistakes. If you're gonna have multiple video elements in your overlay, make sure you use Premiere or After Effects to combine all those video elements into one video and then just loop it in OBS. Here's another example of a live stream. You can see I have myself in a box on the top left again. Above that box, I have a little bit of text. On the very bottom, I have a scroll that comes out of two pipes. Then I have the name of the show in the bottom right, a little slideshow that promotes different videos that I was running at the time. And in the top right, I have a little box that just has a donation widget on top of it. 
In this case, all of the elements were created in Photoshop except for the slideshow. I then imported it into Premiere, added the slideshow, exported it as a video and used it as an overlay and I had absolutely no problems whatsoever using this. The text features are all text that was created within OBS. So this particular overlay was much easier on OBS and didn't bog down my computer. If you're new to OBS and you just want to learn the basics of how you can set it up to go live, you should check this video out right here. My name is Michael Fire Jr. This channel is all about helping you to become a better YouTuber and live streamer through apps and tutorials. And if that's what you're into, subscribe to the channel. You don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.